So, hi everyone. I'm very happy and honored to be here with you today at the World Football Summit in Madrid. My name is Laura Bontora. I spoke it the Spanish way. And um, I'm a TV presenter for The Zone. I just started working for The Zone Germany. And uh, I do a lot of shows back in Germany, but um, I really fell in love with the game and my heart belongs to football. Um, and I'm really happy to be here with you today and I'm happy to say hello to our guests joining me on stage today, ladies first of course, Vice President of Global Communications and Social Impact at The Zone, say hello to Hai Wen Liu. <laughs> Little round of applause, of course. <laughs> And uh, we will be talking about the new partnership between The Zone and Common Go, and that's why we say hello and welcome Jürgen Griesbeck, who is the co-founder of Common Go. Hello, Jürgen. Hi, everyone. You co-founded Common Go with Juan Mata back in 2017 with the belief that um, this project and the game, football, can be a real system changer. So um, I'm really glad we have you here today. And then, special shootout to uh, Nancy Elder, which is uh, the Chief Communications Officer at The Zone, because she woke up at 4 a.m. in the morning, and we say hello to her because she We'll say hi from New York, live from New York, Nancy Elder. Nancy, hi. Nancy, it's, it's 5 a.m. in New York? <laughs> it is 5 a.m. in New York, but for, for the record, I would get up at any time in the middle of the night to have this conversation. Great, thank you so much. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And we are really happy and gla uh, glad to have uh, Lisa Samouj with us today. She's a great, great, talented freestyle footballer. So Lisa, great to have you here. Thank you. Hey. Hey, Virtually so with us. Yes, live from Paris. So glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so. We're really modern, right? To have everybody with us virtually and here on stage. And we really want to talk about this new sponsorship because it's, it's huge for both of you guys. And uh, Jürgen, maybe I start with you for, of course, it, in Germany, we know about Common Goal, everybody knows. But uh, for those here in the room who don't know, can you explain something about this project and what it means to you? Sure. So Common Goal was started four years ago as an athlete-led movement. And the whole idea of Common Goal is to embed purpose in the industry of football, um, meaning that not just as a, as a charity aspect of the industry, but a actually as a reason of being of the industry. Um, this is based on the belief that the industry will only continue to do well if it starts to do good like in a systemic way. Um, now, this has developed, as, as Laura said, it was founded by Juan, Juan Mata, myself, and Thomas as a, as a group of co-founders. And um, since then, another, like a little bit over 200 um, professional athletes have joined the movement. Um, this is athletes and coaches. Nearly half of them are actually female, um, which I think is, 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 is very important to mention. And beyond that, there's also like other stakeholders in the industry that have started to join, like whole clubs have been joining, um, um, journalists, football journalists, uh, football psychologists, um, and most recently companies. And this is what we want to uh, unveil today and the impact sponsorship the zone is signing up to and thus joining the movement as a company. What does it mean to become a Common Goal member? It's contributing at least 1% of a relevant earning of a company or of the earnings of an athlete or the earnings of a club um, into a collective fund that then is purely invested into um, transforming the reality of people in communities out there who need it. So Hai Wen, same with you. For those who may not already know, what is the zone and why have you chosen to team up with Common Goal? 
Yes, hi Lauren, hi everyone, thank you for joining. Uh, for those that do not know, DAZN is a global sports streaming platform. Uh, we are all over the world, and depending on where we are, our set of rights differs slightly. Globally, we are the home of boxing and very proud to be the new home of the Women's Champions League. And then around the world, in Europe in particular, in Germany, for example, we are the home of Laura, as well as Bundesliga. Uh, here in Spain, we're the home of motorsports, including F1 and MotoGP as well as the exclusive home of the Premier League. And then in Italy, we are the home of Serie A, so on and so forth. Um, and that extends to not just live sports, uh, but original content as well. We have uh, original content expertise that we're very proud of uh, in terms of telling the stories uh, within and beyond sport. Uh, so our, our, our goal really is to be a multi-sport uh, global destination sports platform. Why we decided to partner with Common Goal. You know, as we started the conversations with Jurgen and his team last year, and, and well before that, you know, we, we've had a belief and we realized it's really a shared belief, which is the power for football and sports in general to really be a catalyst for social change. And as we spoke to Jurgen and his team, we realized that we share a quote unquote common goal, which is a mission to really drive solution oriented change around vital issues that happen to sit at the intersection of sport and society, which we know that both organizations are really truly able to impact. Can you uh, describe the details of the partnership? I'd be honored to. This is the first time we're sharing the details. We literally announced this news globally, I think, 15 minutes ago. So uh, you all are kind of privy to this uh, first and foremost. But yes, as already has been said, we're so proud to enter into a multi-year partnership with Common Goal. It will be a multi-million dollar investment by DAZN that we are making um, and will be focused specifically around three core issues, again, at the intersection of sports and society. Uh, and those are gender equity, racial justice, as well as cultural diversity. Um, in a few minutes, Jurgen's really Jurgen is going to really detail many of the social initiatives um, that Common Goal has that we'll be investing in that are directly driving impact on the ground through incredible local community partners. So part of our multi-million dollar investment is going to go towards that and again, driving truly solution-oriented change. Another part of the investment is going to go actually towards original programming. Um, as mentioned, we're very proud of the content house that we've built, and we truly believe in the power of storytelling. So uh, collaborating with Common Goal, we plan on co-producing content uh, that not only drives awareness around the issues that I mentioned, but also presents within that content very clear actions that the, that the audience can take. And our true intention um, of, of doing this together with common goal is to spark engagement, spark discourse, but ultimately spark action. I think you're going to hear that word a lot today, action. That's what this partnership is all about. Oh, and I'm so sorry. And the 1%. So in addition to the investment, of course, we love Common Goal's 1% uh, model. Our initial 1% pledge is going to be 1% of global employee time and resources um, of those employees who will be very close to working on the partnership, the content aspect, our local ERGs who will be um, getting involved in the community part of it. And we look forward in the weeks and months to come to thinking through how to innovate beyond that and take the 1% even further whether it's additional internal employee 1% pl pledges or other versions of that. May I just quickly um, of add to that? I'm, I'm just looking at you and feeling really happy because <laughs> um, that you, ha you, you just started to own Common Goal, uh, which, which is cool to see. And that's the nature of the movement. It's not an organization that Common Goal belongs to, but it's a movement. So what we want to inspire people is to just join the movement and as the zone just did, and taking it on and starting to breathe it and to be it, this is actually what, what Common Goal wants to be. It's not an organization that wants to grow. It's a movement that wants to change the industry. Common Goal can be a real game changer. Jürgen, um, I can totally agree because I had a first call with Hai Wen yesterday and she was so excited about the topic, about this event today, so I can totally agree. And we will talk about the social topics like gender, equity, diversity and, and, and uh, all that a little bit later. First of all, one question to Nancy. Can you tell us a bit more about the long-term strategy? 
Yeah, um, let, let's talk about how this fits into the overall DEI strategy at Gizone. I'm truly honored to be leading that process at a moment in time when you can actually feel the chain. It's palpable. And this is all progressive lightning spade for us. Proud of the impact that we've made in such a short period of time. So many companies are at various stages in their DEI journey. But the way we see it, sports fans are the lifeblood of DAZN. And so we must reflect the diversity of all sports fans, whether that be internally or externally. And we've been very intentional in our strategy with um, partners and other organizations that we're working with. I'll just give you a couple of examples. We've appointed our first ever head of diversity, equity, and inclusion last year. We established employee resource groups, like Highwood mentioned. 100 employees around the company stand ready to participate in Common Goal. They've been elevating diverse voices, creating activation with grassroots groups and local partners, showcasing women in STEM, fits perfectly into Common Goal. We've also been doing diverse hiring practices, started recruitment partnerships, including with My G Work and Code First Girls. With Code First Girls, for example, we have two students joining us next month in tech engineering who just recently graduated. This is working towards inspiring a next generation of women tech leaders and bringing great talent into our organization and bringing more people who want to do the 1% participation. We've also increased visibility and content around women's sport and female athletes. Our platform, it's on our platform, across our social and news channels. And just as an example, since 2019, we created a new strategy for women in sports and our mission to increase visibility we increased coverage of women's sports on our own channels by 175% and are attracting new audiences as a result. So it's pretty simple for us. This is a business imperative. And that leads me to, to talk a little bit more about common goal, just to put that framework around it. For us, joining as a global impact sponsor is totally in sync with what we're doing as a wider business. I think of this as kind of a flywheel effect. Get organized internally begin to show how we think about talent production and original content differently. Do deals like we talked about with Wakewood's Women's Champions League, making matches free to air on YouTube. We want these amazing athletes to be household names, and our goal is clear. We want to elevate UEFA Women's Champions League to commercial maturity so that it's on equal footing with the men's game. And likewise with Common Goal, yet another huge step will drive change in our communities, audiences, and the industry around major social issues. We can only do this together. And if this easy, these issues were easy to solve, somebody would have done it by now. So this is a coalition approach. And anyone, welcome, come and join us. Join Common Goal. Get in with all the trailblazing members on the One Percent Pledge. Adidas just newly signed. This is an extremely powerful mix. And in our mind, this coalition mentality is the only way we'll see the change that we all want to happen. Nancy, thank you so much. Uh, starting with um, gender equity, um, you spoke about that. Um, it's, of course, a topic close to my heart as I work also in an industry that is still dominated by men. Um, it's great to have Lisa with us for that topic because I think, Lisa, you're a real role model when it comes to gender equity because you're a big star in your football freestyle uh, business. And uh, can you tell us something about uh, your experiences uh, in your business? How was it for you as a woman? Oh, hold on, Lisa. We can't really hear you. We try to fix it. Maybe you have to turn on your microphone. Are you on oh, mute? Oh, yeah. Now, now we can hear you. Okay, Lisa, again. Did you did you understand me? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank so you. your your experiences. Um. So I first started. Uh, Oh, I no. was eight years old. I was one of the only only girl in my team. Um, actually, I no, I didn't feel this um, 
gender equality problem um, when I was eight years old because my teammates were so welcome with me and I think it helped me with my confidence. Um, I was eight years old, they all knew me, they all knew my skills. But when you came to play against um, the opponents, they were all shocked by the fact that they had a woman uh, in, in their team. And they were all talking, you know, trash about me. My um, the the coaches who were playing um, against me, uh, they were talking. I remember my mom was on the sideline, and uh, uh, she was <laughs> getting a little upset. But it was a motivation. It was a source of motivation for me to to show to the people that uh, girls could do what men you know are doing right now uh in 2007 it was very tough because uh we had no role models um women's football was not as uh, famous as it is today and i'm glad it has changed um so yeah i started football then i switched with freestyle in 2010 uh, that's a, you know kind of the same thing um i was one of the only girl in france um and then i found this you know passion for 1v1, um, what made me kind of kind of famous on social media, playing against men. Um, you know, people were so, they were so happy to see a, a woman, and I was 14 years old back then, so they were so happy to see a girl playing on the streets against guy and just, you know, um, showing to those guys that, you know, uh, we can do it too, and uh, that's my experience. It was you know, tough growing up, um, being a, a woman in a male industry. But at the same time, for me, it was a source of motivation. Uh, I always had this um, power to, you know, I always had people to push me, always had guys, uh, teammates uh, to push me and uh, to be the best um, of my, uh, the best version of myself. So, uh, yeah, that's how I started and that's why you know, I'm here now to try to push women's sports and uh, try to, yeah, to put a light on women's sport and women's football. Lisa, thanks for sharing that. And of course, Lisa is a, a, a Common Goal member for a long time now. And you're also big, big, big on social media. So nowadays, how do you use your platforms and all your followers to promote your topic, gender equity, um, to promote Common Goal? How do you use your platforms? First, I'm so, I'm so glad to be part of Common Goal. It has been two years now. Um, in those two years, we had COVID, so uh, yeah, that was tough. But I'm so I'm so glad to be part of Common Goal. I believe that now I'm in a I'm in a part of my life where I want to have a positive impact on people's life, and I believe that Common Goal that's the main goal of Common Goal. One person, yes, but you know, making content and trying to have a, a real impact on people is the, their main goal and that's my goal too. So that's why I joined um, Common Goal and I can't wait. Uh, I'm making content on social media a lot and I, can, I cannot wait to start and making content with Common Goal because I know now that that's one of their uh, main thing. And uh, yeah, making content and being in real, you know, in real life and traveling and meeting uh, all the young kids, young women, and playing and sharing my story is um, what I want to do next. Um, I think my platform is one of the main things where I can share my story. And uh, with Common Goal, we're going to do uh, great things uh, in the future, and I cannot wait. That's so great. And when I say big, we are talking about two million followers. That's huge. Um, uh, let's follow up on that. Hi, Wen. Um, where is uh, the zone standing at the moment when it comes to gender equity? Yeah, so Nancy touched on this a little bit in terms of what we're doing internally. You know, we definitely recognize that our global workforce should be reflective uh, of all flan uh, excuse me, of all fans globally. So uh, that's work that's more happening behind the scenes. But I think what we're especially proud of, and there is definitely a clear connection uh, to Common Goal down the line, is our new partnership with UEFA around the Women's Champions League. You know, DAZN has had a long time uh, vision when it comes to women's sport, and that it should be perceived and treated equally as men's sport. 
duh, right? You know, it's a long time coming. The fact that we're not there yet is a little bit wild, but we're going to keep doing the work to get us there. And we believe that as a global broadcaster and a media company, what we can do to really do that um, is drive visibility around women's sport. Uh, when you think about it, there's a very clear gap specifically when it comes to coverage, and that's coverage in every sense of the word broadcast coverage. Um, the matches you can't find, you don't know when to watch, unideal times, uh, especially if it's clashing with the men's event. Social coverage, not enough people talking about it. You know, we recently did a social media analysis which showed when it comes to male athletes in men's sports versus female athletes in women's sports, it's not that there aren't incredible events and athletes that are being talked about, it's that the athletes are so few and far between and the events are very much peaks, whether it's the recent US Open, the World Cup, the Olympics, the world literally rallies around women footballers, but for some reason it's only occasionally versus the steady drumbeat that you see for, for men's football. Why is that? Um, you know, again, it's that gap. It's, it's the media coverage. There's a gap in media coverage. When you look at the data uh, around the world from Spain to Italy to the US to UK, it's as low as 1% of total sports coverage. That's women's sports coverage to a very disappointing 10% for the highest market. 10% in the highest market that's covering women's sport. That is a crazy gap when it comes to media. Um, and so there's all these gaps that exist. And so DAZN is really proud to do what we can to, to narrow that gap. And so our partnership with UEFA and YouTube is going to make the Women's Champions League free for the world to see for the next four years. Um, two of those years, all matches will be live on DAZN as well as on YouTube for free. And then the next wow. two years, it'll be a split between wow. YouTube and DAZN. And we think that's going to do crazy amazing things in terms of growing the Women's Champions League into a much bigger competition where it truly deserves to be, which is the top of women's club competition. Um, so that's something we're very proud of. And uh, incidentally, there are many, many Women's Champions League players, as Jurgen men mentioned, there's so many female members of Common Goal. Many of them happen to be Women's Champions League players. So as we look at this partnership, as it really takes off, you can imagine there's all these incredible crossover opportunities down the line when it comes to this amazing property and all the great work that Common Goal is doing. So as we are running out of time a little bit, uh, just a quick uh, sum up maybe, Jürgen. Why is gender equity also a very important topic to you guys? Maybe just one, one step back and also saying hello to Ella and hello to Ariana who, is, who are both Common Goal members um, in, the, in, in, in the audience here. Um, Hi girls. <laughs> actually Champions League players, um, um, former. And, um, and I just wanted to touch on the thought leadership here, um, both from a company's perspective as well as from an athlete perspective, because we're in, in early stages of, of obviously developing this movement all together. Um, and we just need to highlight the importance. And it, the 1% and, and Lisa was, was, re was referring to that is just a technicality if you want. The, 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 the most important thing is inspiration and leadership. And that's what, what, what both the individuals, but also now the companies that are getting behind that movement and actually becoming part of the movement and, and actually owning the movement in their own right, um, that's the important thing. Now, um, the, the main topics, we are all looking at the global goals and the Agenda 2030. And within that, there's more direct and more immediate impact football can have. Um, and then here, gender equity, racial justice, and, and pride, or the, in a wider sense, diversity, um, are just three important topics. Um, the, the interesting thing, I don't know if everybody knows, but before founding Common Goal, there was a 20-year time invest in actually surfacing the best practice in the communities, which has matured over time. So best practice organizations all across the world, um, which is now a group of 150 organizations working out of 100 countries, which is actually the source of wisdom for our investment um, from Common Goal. So the, 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 like the whole theory of change behind the indicators of success are coming actually bottom up and they are meeting the 1% technicality that's coming in like as a resource, both financial and non-financial, also in the case of the zone, as, as Hai Wen was referring to. That's, that meets then in the most meaningful sense. 
Um, now we could actually uh, actually go into more detail of the projects, but I, I think time is is I short. I know uh, we have ten minutes left, so we have to be quick. Um, I will do short questions, guys. So um, changes in progress, but it's a long way, of course. So on to the next topic, which is really, really important. And I know the zone and common goal will work on that topic as well. S uh, social and, 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 and racial justice. It's so important. You have a project in, in common goal, which is the anti racist project. Just quick, say something about the project. One of, of the main pillars, we work in collective projects. So that means that a group, a, a, a big group of organizations are actually behind each of these thematic pillars. They're subject matters that matter. Um, and, and we then find together with them a response to that. So this, in, in the case of, of, of racial justice, it's, it's actually like um, tackling the issue of systemic um, and historically embedded um, racial injustice um, in, in our environment. And here we're looking at institutions, we're looking at clubs, both professional as well as, well as amateur and grassroots, and, and really informing, educating from a boardroom actually to the pitch um, and, and provoking um, the change that we believe is needed in order to make football as relevant and as successful as it can be, both from a business perspective as well as from a contribution perspective to people and planet. So that's probably as a summary. Okay, and um, for that issue, we have a video, a short video message from a young, talented, but also very intelligent football player from Watford. He's a Nigerian Dutch professional and captain of the Nigerian national team. So um, special thanks. And we have a look at the video from William Trost Ekong. Hello everyone, I'm William Chosukong. I'm a defender for Watford Football Club and the Nigerian Super Eagles captain. Um, yeah, of course, I'm, I'm yeah, really sorry I can't be here today uh, in person. Unfortunately, I've got uh, training going on today, so we've had to record this before. Um, I'm really hoping to meet all of you guys in person. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to, to be part of, uh, of, of your conference today. I've been a Common Goal member for three years now. And um, yeah, the reason that I feel like I still want to be such a big part of this movement is because as my profile has, has increased and as I've been uh, playing all over the world, um, yeah, I felt like the last two, three years have been amazing in the sense of work that we could have done together and also all the exciting prospects that we have ahead of us. So I'm really excited to pledge 1% uh, again this season and for the rest of my playing seasons. And uh, yeah, really excited to be part of this conference today. I'm really happy to hear that Common Goal and Azul are going to be basing their collaboration around um, tackling racial discrimination and also um, any type of discrimination on and off the pitch. Um, in my experience, I've played in uh, so many different countries. I felt that uh, there's always been an issue, an underlying issue that has to be uh, addressed. I feel in the last few months, uh, especially seeing what's happened in the Euros, um, a lot of it has got a lot more attention. And uh, has got a lot, of, a lot of people talking about it, which I think is the, the, the first step towards any kind of change. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy to see that such a big platform like the Zone is going to be taking that responsibility on as well. Um, and I think that's the only way that we can really make progress is by, first of all, bringing it out in the open. Um, and then afterwards, we can see the best way we can deal with it. Uh, my personal experience in Italy, there's been occasions where we've played um, and not just fans uh, that have been in the stadium that have obviously, um, yeah, um, discriminated against the black players, uh, but also afterwards on social media or different platforms that they have accessibility to us as players. Um, yeah, they felt um, the possibility and also the right to, um, to, to, to say those kind of things. So I think it's so important that we, we find a way uh, to address that on the pitch, in the stadiums, but also apart from that, um, away from the pitch, um, on social media, for example, uh, or any kind of outlet which gives people access to the players and also sets an example of how people should be in a modern society. Being part of this movement has been um, a way for me to express myself uh, and also across players, seeing that there's uh, such a big culture in football where we like to look at each other uh, to see what other players are doing. Um, that is, yeah, I feel Common Goal has been a great way for me to also encourage other players to uh, not only pledge money, 
but also feel like they can um, take on a bigger role outside of football uh, to try and help the world in general and try and make this a better place. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy to see that there's been players who've been encouraged to join Common Goal uh, since I've started, not only from Nigeria, but other clubs I've been playing at um, and also want to become a leader in their personal space uh, space. Uh, and also um, within their changing room, um, their team, their league, uh, and eventually trying to um, involve as many people as possible. The, for me, the biggest beauty of football is the team play and really a team effort of trying to get a job done. Um, I think the, the best way that society can model um, um, around football and trying to encourage you changes is really trying to make it a team effort. Um, there's so many different examples in sport uh, where you can only really get a result if everyone contributes to it. So I feel like we as a player can be the forefront of this and trying to get this movement move going. Uh, Dazon partnering as a leading uh, broadcast around the world is a massive step in the right direction. And hopefully it will follow by different people, different members of this team, all including themselves and um, adding to that uh, to really get the result that we want, which is the change in the world, really. Lastly, I just want to say a massive thank you for listening to me today. Um, I want to wish you guys an amazing rest of this conference. And also, I want to say a big congratulations to Common Goal and Dazon uh, for this new partnership. And I'm really looking forward to see how this kicks on from here. So, yeah, all the best and I uh, hope to meet you all soon in person. Thank you. Thank you so much, William. Powerful words. And he's so right. Uh, Jürgen, quick, we talked about this uh, before. Uh, on the one hand, we see uh, players posting their big watches and cars and everything. On the other hand, how important is it to have role models like William, players who stand up for the right thing, who uses their voices and who are, who are great idols for, for young people to look at? Yeah, again, I think it's this thought leadership, this um, role modeling, um, this inspiration um, you can spread if you have an audience um, you can talk to actually. Um, I, I think uh, the, the most important thing he mentioned there was the team play aspect and, and that comes back to what Common Goal actually in, in, in nature is. Um, it, wants, it wants football to, to be its best self. Um, and, and there is currently, at least in in my personal opinion, there is not this instance that's actually taking care of what football could actually be. Okay. Um, there's a lot of organizational leadership, institutional leadership, um, who are looking for the best of the organization or the institution or the company. But this coming together to really make football what it could be, and if it can be, it must be, um, because the world can't afford a football that doesn't do its best in order to contribute to people and planet. And we're running out of the planet, and, and we're running out of being, um, being living in a, in, a, in, a, in a fair environment um, for everybody who is actually sharing this planet. So football must contribute. I know yeah. we're running out of time, but a quick point I wanted to touch on that William made is, you know, talking is great, but what we really need to see is change, you know, specifically to this topic, for example, being not racist and being anti-racist are two very different things. And, you know, what we're so proud to be doing with Common Goal Together is that tangible, deliberate action towards being anti-racist. You know, truly understanding the innate biases that maybe exist within yourself or the groups that you find yourself in, whether it's fellow employees, a team, a club, etc. You know, potential microaggressions that you might be accidentally projecting out, and so on and so forth. Other behaviors that can take on any which form. It's really being de deliberate about learning about those, being trained against them, and then truly making change. You know, just sitting back and saying, I'm not racist is not enough. We all need to get to the point where we're collectively anti-racist as an example to this topic. So there's a third topic we want to discuss today. So that's why I have to like move on and say we have to be quick uh, because this topic is also very, very important. And um, I know it's a common goal topic uh, for a long time, uh, uh, cultural diversity. So what is a uh, common goal and the zone doing in that topic? You want to start, Haiwan? Do you want to go from the company's perspective first? Uh, sure, you can start with Yeah. Me. So, I mean, 
and also like looking at time, I don't think that we have to dive deep, too deep into it. The cultural diversity is obviously a wide mm -hmm. spectrum of things. Where we're focusing on is actually um, LGBTQI plus um, inclusion. Um, so really making every access point to football inclusive to LGBTQI plus communities. Um, and therefore there's a whole like curriculum playbook behind, which we call Play Proud. Um, but in the, in the interest of time, I, I don't think that it, it's, it's too important now to dive into it. Okay, because I really wanted to ask uh, Lisa about uh, cultural diversity. I think it's a topic you're really familiar with too. Uh, can you share your thoughts about this with us? Cultural diversity? Um, well, you know, I'm from, uh, I'm from, uh, I'm from Paris, France, but obviously uh, I'm a North African and um, I truly believe that having representation and cultural diversity in, in football is so important uh, as a woman and as a, a, a North African woman. Um, it's, so, it's so good to see, you know, all those cultures and uh, bring together and with football. Um, so yeah, as a as an Algerian girl, um, I'm just trying to to show the girls that we can do what we can, especially in uh, in this country where you know sometimes uh, women need uh, women need some help to, to to speak and to act. And uh, I'm proud to represent uh, to be able to represent France and and, and Algerian my North African sides. And I'm proud to see a common goal win. Uh, this for LGBTQ plus, um, so that's that's a great news. I'm glad to hear this. What is the big challenge you have to focus on? Hi, Wen. I think the big challenge. Oh yeah, you sorry. wanna? Yeah, sorry. No, 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 you go, you go, you go. Sorry. I, I think the big challenge is what I said earlier. It, it's getting more people to join the collective movement. One person can't drive change one brand, one team, one organization. You know, the world needs to truly change together. And so how quickly can we get to the point where we're no longer talking about these issues when they're no longer issues? You know, it's been a challenge for centuries, decades, et cetera. That's the challenge, that change isn't happening quick enough. So how do we work together to make sure we're really propelling it forward? So the partnership is a good chance to, uh, to, to partner and uh, to do it all together. Um, yeah, five minutes left. So we we have to do a quick summary and Nancy, maybe I say hello again to New York as you uh, stand up at 4 a.m. for us today. Um, <laughs> thanks again. Um, what are your thoughts of what you heard today and uh, what are your goals with this partnership? Yeah, it's really simple for us. Like in one word, it's, it's impact. We heard impact a lot today. It speaks intentional. This is an impact sponsorship and that word was chosen very thoughtfully as we look to drive real change, tangible impact around the movement. As to where this goes, we are so excited to find out, not only in how our two year roadmap manifests, but all the other ideas we haven't even thought of together for the new iterations of the 1% that will take the partnership to even new heights. So join us, and in Jurgen's words, to help make football its best self. Come along. <laughs> Thank you. We are, Nancy, we are. Um, hi, Wen, uh, what does success look like for you? Um, success is an increased movement. As I keep speaking in common goal terms and really live and breathe it, you know, if it's not obvious enough why these are issues I need tackling, I think from a business perspective, it should be quite obvious as well. You know, purpose-driven companies drive higher business revenues, better brand loyalty, uh, consumer loyalty, et cetera. There's so many reasons, whatever that reason might be, you know, I think we all need to be very much implored to be a part of the change. So as Nancy said, and as Jurgen has said, you know, let's all come together. We literally, every single one of us in this room, every brand, every club, every federation, we need to drive change together. So now you have the partnership with The Zone, um, which is great for you, for your movement. Um, you can go even bigger. Can you give us a quick summary, Jürgen? What are your goals, your wishes? Yeah, first of all, it, uh, I, I would challenge this, the fact that it's our move, like our movement, it's our movement. 
Um, I think that's very important um, because it's uh, my interest is not to make common goal big. Um, my my interest is to to shift mindset, and, and common goal is just an instrument to do that. Um, so I think that's that's very important. So nobody joins me and my movement, but everybody joins in a collective movement that has a collective goal, and therefore it's called common goal. Um, so so that's important. We have a we we just know that action is urgent. Like we have an agenda, um, a collective agenda, and we just believe that football needs as a collective to wrap it, its head around of what it wants to be. And what it is currently is not good enough. Um, and we have to push to make it better. And I would want everybody who is in football to ask yourself tomorrow morning when you stand up, what will you do in order to be part of the solution? So uh, I think we have to end this, but maybe you allow me one quick question to, to Lisa. Lisa, what are your hopes for, for a better future? Well, my hope for the first changes, that's, that was the word uh, today, and that's the word. I think it's time to, to work towards these big changes. Um, I hope that, I hope to see more infrastructures for women's sport and women's football. I hope to see more people watching uh, women's football. I'm really into women's football, so I'm trying to, you know, push uh, women's sports as much as I can. And uh, yeah, I'd like, you know, women equality to, and uh, gender equality to, to, to be much better in the, in the future. And I think the zone and the common goal are about to, to make great things and um, I can't wait to be a part of it. Um, so yeah, that's, I just can't wait for the changes. Now it's time to change. <laughs> thank you so much. Lisa Samouche and Nancy Elder, thank you for joining us virtually. Strange these days, but okay. Thank you so much. You made it happen. Thank you, guys. And a big, big thank you to Hai Wen Lu and Jürgen Griesbeck. It's such a big, big topic. It's so important. And I think um, this partnership is just perfect. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very for much. listening.